Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're making this lap desk slash TV tray with a flocked cup holder inlay using a Shapoko 2 CNC machine. Let's get started. This project was inspired by my living room setup. While there's a great recliner in my room perfect for watching TV, there is no surface nearby where I can put my drink. To avoid the clutter of an extra end table next to the chair, I decided to make a simple lap desk that doubles as a tray, perfect for holding my drink and for transporting snacks and other items from the kitchen. The lap desk is designed to fit over my recliner's arms and has three main features. One, a board that makes up the work surface. Two, handles that keep the tray from sliding sideways off of the chair. And three, a suede flocked recess that acts as a cup holder. I began by measuring the width of my recliner, adding an inch to each side so that the tray could easily be placed across the arms. I then bought two boards from my local hardware store, which roughly corresponded to the desired dimensions of the tray. While the board's width and thickness were the perfect size, they were a little long to use as is. I used a T-square to mark out the distance I had measured earlier, and used a bandsaw to cut the board to the right length. I also cut a 12-inch piece off of the second board, which I would use to make the tray handles, and then used a sander to get rid of any splinters from the cut edges. The cup holder is cut into the board using a Shapoko 2 CNC machine and Inventables Easel Cam software, a free, browser-based CNC design and G-code program available at easel.com. I first started a new easel project, selected the appropriate material, and entered the material dimensions. I then drew a circle into the workspace by selecting the shape from Easel's predefined shape toolbar. I set the circle's diameter to be slightly larger than a standard coffee mug and moved it to location 00. zero. I next set the depth of cut to an eighth of an inch and changed the cutting operation to fill as I wanted to hollow out the shape into the wood. Clicking the carve button at the top of the screen opened a prompt that walked me through the steps to mount the board in the machine and to set the machine zero position, which I located so that the center of the recess would be where I wanted it to be in the tray top. After this, the machine began cutting. While this process is automated and does not require any user interaction, it is still a good idea to wear hearing and eye protection, as the router is quite loud, especially in an enclosed space, and small chips could easily fly away from the workspace during the milling operation. To design the handles, I used Inkscape, a free vector editing program available at inkscape.org. For this step, I simply drew two nested rectangles, setting the outer rectangle's width to the desired length of the tray's handles, and setting the inner rectangle's width to the desired length of the tray handle slots. To make the tray more comfortable to hold, I also rounded the corner radii of the inner rectangle and the bottom edge of the outer rectangle to a quarter inch. After this, I saved the file as an SVG and returned to Easel. SVG files can be loaded into Easel by using the Import SVG option in the File menu. After loading the file, I deleted the circle from the previous operation and positioned the bottom corner of the handle at the Easel workspace origin. This time, I set the depth of cut to the thickness of the material and selected the outline cutting operation. I then mounted the 12-inch board I had cut previously into the machine, reset the zero position, and used this design to cut two handles out of the wood. At this point, it should be noted that a CNC machine is not necessary to recreate this project. The parts for this tray could have just as easily been made by hand with a router and a belt sander. If you've made your own tray, I'd love to see it. Please share a link with me in the comments below. After the handles were done, I removed them from the wood and took the pieces to the garage for another round of sanding, making sure to again get rid of any leftover splinters. At this point, the components were ready to be glued together. I applied a liberal amount of wood glue to the edge of the handle without rounded corners and carefully positioned them so that their outer edge was centered and flush with the outer edge of the tray top. I then clamped the pieces together, wiped off the excess wood glue squeezing out from between the pieces, and let everything dry overnight. The next morning, I returned to the garage for a final round of sanding, removing any additional wood glue that had squeezed out at the joints, and smoothed out all of the tray's edges one last time. To seal and stain the wood, I used polyurethane. After opening the can, I mixed the polyurethane with a chopstick, and applied an even coat to all sides of the tray using a foam brush. This sealed the wood, and will help to protect it from any future spills when the tray is being used. A word of caution, the polyurethane has a very strong odor. Make sure to only apply it in a well-ventilated area. I let the first coat dry overnight and then sanded all of the tray sides to get rid of any small air bubbles and dust using a finishing pad. I then used mineral spirits and a paper towel to remove any dust deposited on the tray during the sanding operation. At this point, I was very happy with the tray's color, so instead of applying another coat of the colored polyurethane, which would have made the tray darker, I instead used a clear semi-gloss polyurethane as the second coat. After letting this coat dry for another day, it was time to add the suede inlay to the cup holder. I first masked off the recess using painter's tape, and then used a utility knife to cut along the inner edge of the circle. 
I next applied a thick layer of wood glue to the bottom and sides of the recess using another foam brush. The suede inlay is applied using a process called flocking that uses a paper tube called a flocking gun to puff fiber dust onto a sticky surface. The flocking gun is made out of two nested paper tubes, one of which has a grate at the bottom. I first pulled the flocking gun apart and filled the tube without the grate about halfway with the fiber dust. Don't worry about filling the tube up too much because any unused fiber can be emptied back into the storage bag. I then reassembled the tube and deposited the fiber onto the glue by pumping the tube in a twisting motion. Another word of warning, the dust is very fine and will get everywhere. If you decide to flock your next project, be sure to do it in a wide open space or outside on a day without much wind so that you can easily sweep it up afterwards. After the recess was covered in the fiber dust, I wiped off the excess back into the storage bag and let everything dry for a few hours, thereafter removing the painter's tape. The final step was to take the tray into my living room, pour myself a drink, and rejoice that I now had a new surface to put things on while I'm relaxing in my recliner. In addition to a cup holder, it's of course possible to add other features to the board as well, like a place to put your remotes, a smartphone stand, and whatever else you can think of. If you've made your own tray, please share it with me in the comments below. Thanks for watching! Now go super make something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. To keep up with the latest episodes, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out all of my other videos by clicking on the video to the right, and follow me on Twitter at SuperMakeSMTHNG. See you next time, now go super make something!